<laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I hope this works. I was trying to stream from my cell phone, which would have been really cool. I'm going to try again. I'm going to have to work out all the technical issues, I guess. For some reason, the audio wasn't working, and I was having a lot of issues with a lot of other stuff. So, you know, it's like everybody wants uh, to live forever, but we can't even get streaming on the internet from our cell phones correct. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, first figure that out. If we can figure out streaming on the internet from our cell phones, I imagine then we can figure out uh, how to live forever. But until then, <laughs> don't bet on it. Um, <laughs> thank you for understanding, Carol. I appreciate it. Um, I was talking a, a bit about a project I was working on, engineering um, these uh, biofilm forming bacteria bacterial cellulose producing biofilm forming <laughs> um, yeah which has been a pretty fun project they're actually a bacillus species um, bacillus amylo liquo fascians or something like that um, and apparently they're used in fertilizer and, and stuff like that which uh, is interesting um, there are bacteria from the soil and we isolated them and uh, sequenced, identified them through sequencing. And uh, it was pretty cool. Um, you can actually get a, I don't think we sell a pure culture um, from our website, the Odin website. Um, but uh, you can buy, I think we have like a biomaterials kit that sells um, a culture of these most of the cultures have been grown with uh um started with like cyclohexamide and stuff like that so there's no yeast or other contamination but also they're not like pure cultures technically um but we might start selling them if there's a demand for it at all because it really is an interesting species of bacteria not only can it produce these like huge things of cellulose but also um it can help plants grow. Um, apparently, like, interacts with their roots. I imagine it might, like, form these peptidoglycan or, or glycan layers around the roots. Um, and it, that's what helps them grow and survive. Who knows? Um, just something that uh, seems fun. It seems fun to make uh, bacterial cellulose that is fluorescent or something you know, a different color, I don't know, naturally occurring, colorful, fluorescent material, textile. Uh, anyway, um, maybe you heard or didn't hear, but uh, Stripe, our payment processor, shut us down on Friday. That was quite disappointing. Um, <laughs> to put it mildly, I mean, the thing is, is it's not like the first time a payment processor has shut us down or like removed our ability to, um, you know, sell stuff. We always have backups because this is like the fourth time it's happened, but it's still pretty annoying because it's just like, we have been using Stripe for a year, over a year. Um, and uh, everything seemed fine and then all of a sudden on Friday got an email that was just like yeah we're canceling your account because we think the Odin sells dangerous thing for medical devices first and then it was like dangerous things um, and then it was just like yeah I mean uh, we're finding other payment processors they're just a lot more complicated and the rates are more expensive usually. Um, so like we're applying to use other payment processors and stuff like that right now. We just, you know, 
it's it's really easy to use the big payment processors because you don't have to put in much work. Um, so I know that uh, you know there's plenty of payment processors out there. That's not necessarily the issue. Um, the issue is just that uh, you know it takes time and effort to get all these things going. Um, and uh, so you know we should have multiple payment processors soon we're still selling stuff on our website so don't worry we have other payment processors that we've been using um but you know given that these payment processors tend to cut us off you know <laughs> we don't really know um what the time frame is for keeping this payment processor so it's just like uh um we always want to have backups, you know, one or two or whatever. <laughs> so uh, that's that's the goal right now is just working on finding other payment processors. Um, yeah, it's just like annoying because we sell science supplies, like genetic engineering and science supplies, none of which is dangerous. Like seriously, all of it you can eat. You can eat even the plastic and I'm sure you'd be fine. Um, we don't sell anything that's like hazardous or dangerous or would kill you. Um, and so it's strange how we get like marked as dangerous or like why people are afraid of us. And I don't know if it's just like people don't understand what's going on. They really are afraid, um, or what it is, but it's, uh, it's definitely annoying because it's like all this genetic engineering and biohacking stuff that I do. Um, I like to believe it's for a bigger purpose or something, you know, that uh, it's a good thing that people are learning to do this stuff. And so, um, yeah, even sun and cigarettes change DNA, it's true. Um, and so it's kind of annoying because it's like, uh, trying to educate people and then just getting shut down for it um yeah it's not like you know if you constantly have to deal with that stuff it's just like uh, there's more important things in life you know it seems like why aren't people on my side and the fact that the odin has been a company for i don't know six seven years now um and uh we still the stuff still happens it's just like when is it going to end we don't need a payment processor as i said like there are plenty out there that's not necessarily the issue um you know uh it's just getting canceled you know we were trying to use and have been trying to use some of the major payment processors because they're really easy to use and uh you know great everything great technical support great integration great all this stuff and so we've been trying to work with them and uh it just didn't work out yeah i mean there's a lot of dangerous things out there and it's, it's just weird like genetic engineering educational stuff like, I don't know what specifically that we sell. I mean, nobody ever points at it, but it's like, yeah, it's strange. It's not like anything we sell can be used directly in humans, should be used directly in humans, or like, I, I don't even know. I don't even know. Like, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, it's annoying. You know, it's just like earlier this year, I gave a talk at this conference, Hereticon, and, uh, you know, put on by like Founders Fund and Mike Solano and people like that. Um, don't judge. <laughs> Mike's a friend of mine. Um, but also it's like... Uh, you know, it was supposed to be like a conference for heretics, 
you know, people who are controversial. Um, a lot of controversial people, you know, were like Twitter controversial and not like real life controversial. Um, like, and it sucks because like, I constantly have to deal with being controversial, even though I'm not trying to. That's the problem. I mean, there have been points in my life when I try to be controversial. And there'll probably be points in my life in the future where I try to be controversial. But like a lot, most of the time, I'm not trying to be controversial. I'm just trying to like do, teach people science and genetic engineering, you know, do simple, easy things. And it's like really annoying that, uh, that, you know, I have to deal with that all the time. It's like, I don't want to have to deal with constantly, you know, being canceled, having my accounts canceled, being banned from social medias and stuff like that. I'm not trying to do stuff wrong. I'm not trying to, like, um, piss people off. And it's funny because it's just like science, you know? It's like when you do science and it pisses people off, that's like... Like, that's funny, right? It's like, what is the world coming to when you can't even help pe teach people science? <laughs> when you teach people science and people don't like it. Like, what is the world coming to? It's so weird. It's not like anybody judges the things we're doing. They immediately just, like, with prejudice, extreme prejudice, they're just like, you can no longer do this stuff. And uh, I don't know, to me, that makes it even more important to do biohacking. And I see a lot of people um, who are interested, and it's just like, damn, you know? Like, people are afraid of this. People in power are afraid of something like this. The people in power are afraid of people learning and understanding genetic engineering. And they say, oh, it's dangerous. And you're like, how is it dangerous? Like, give me an example or a, a way it could be dangerous. And nobody can ever supply any any idea or example. Well, like, somebody's going to create a virus that's going to kill people. You know how hard it is to create a virus and make enough of it? <laughs> like, that is difficult. It's not easy. And even if somebody could do that, like... The chances that they're going to be able to spread it through a popular like how are they even going to test it who you test it on you just like kidnap some people and like test it on people in your basement like it's like some super villain shit you know it's like all super villain shit it's not like real life shit like somebody in their garage is gonna make right it's dangerous too Big Pharma and all these other people who are trying to just like monopolize and corner the market. I think that's the biggest problem is that people are afraid that biohackers actually might do something and help people. <laughs> and then they're going to be like, oh shit, you know, for this whole time that pharmaceutical companies and the government haven't been doing anything. Like, how can these people in their garages do stuff? And it's like the COVID vaccine. I hate to say COVID vaccine because, you know, it's like the C word. <laughs> and uh, the Facebook censors might catch me or whatever. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's like we, me and David Ishii and Dario, um, you know, we created a COVID vaccine and tested it on ourselves, saw, you know, immune responses. And this was way before anything was even released. We could have had it done, you know, really early, but we wanted to live stream the whole process and teach people how to make a vaccine. And uh, so, you know, we didn't actually finish testing the vaccine until like September or October of 2020. But it was way before the public had access to any vaccines. That's crazy and scary, you know, that, like, people could have died 
you know, people did die because of lack of access to the vaccine. Because the government, the companies wanted to make money and uh, they had to go through the proper channels to do it. Nobody was trying to save anybody's life. Uh uh-uh. uh. They were just trying to make a shit ton of money and they did. They did. Holy shit. Like these pharmaceutical companies. Moderna never even had a product on market before and now all of a sudden they made, you know, ten billion dollars in revenue or some shit. Like what? How is it can we profit off of human life like that? That just seems crazy. Yeah, I mean alterations to the body and so like basically anything you do that modifies the chemistry or metabolism or structure of the body all have to go through the FDA, which is really weird because you know it, it's this whole like my body, my choice thing. Like we don't have any choices in regards to our body. Like the government took them all away and then they sometimes give them back to us. <laughs> but like the government has never allowed us to have any choice with our body on anything. Which is crazy, right? It's dumb. We live in a society where we don't even own our own bodies. We can't even do whatever we want to our own bodies. Eat whatever we want. Drink whatever we want. Try whatever drugs or pharmaceuticals that we want. Can't smoke whatever we want or have whatever surgeries or treatments that we want. Like, it's crazy. We do not own our bodies. Would you do a build your own vaccine 101 class session? No, I don't want to be canceled. We kind of did, you know. Um, And uh, you can find uh, uh, videos that we did for the COVID vaccine on Odyssey. O-D-Y-S-E-E. And... uh, yeah, you can look on there, and all the videos should be on Odyssey, um, odyssey.com slash biohack the planet. And uh, you should be able to find all the videos about uh, the COVID vaccine we did. Um, we didn't do an RNA vaccine. Um, a denovirus vaccine, I don't think it's classic, is it? Um Generally, what they do is they, uh, um, well, I mean, not generally. There's a bunch of different types of vaccines. But generally, they use protein material or um, attenuated virus, you know, virus that's been killed or proteins from the virus or something like that that's injected into the body and the body has a response, uh, immune response to the those proteins, and then we stop the virus. Um and then uh, the new method that they used was mRNA, which was weird. We did a DNA vaccine, which is really similar to mRNA. Um, but uh, they did mRNA, uh, which basically the mRNA goes into the cell, produces the protein. The protein goes out of the cell. The immune system reacts to it. And, you know, then you're vaccinated, though, like how well these vaccines actually work even for me ours is unclear though i have yet to get covid um i've been tested a bunch so who knows (laughs) but uh yeah i also lived in the bay area and i kind of have this hypothesis that everybody in the bay area like got covid way before we even knew about it um yeah just stuff going around but uh yeah um but yeah it was the first ever mrna vaccine which was weird also um and uh yeah it was weird that the government just gave a bunch of money to an mrna vaccine when there's like a lot of tried and true methods for vaccination that weren't made available and i think it's because the technology to make it was just proprietary right some of these companies could charge tons of money and make tons of money off of it like dna vaccines are really easy to make and it's not proprietary at all and so you can just make massive amounts of it 
anybody can. Um, and it's not like temperature sensitive, like mRNA. Um, uh, and it's so it's strange that we didn't use like DNA vaccines or protein vaccines or something like that. Um, any idea when the next COVID level pandemic? It, 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 here's the thing is that like, we should be afraid of like pharmaceutical companies and government and scientists. Um, because like if the next pandemic's worse, like, are you really going to wait a year to get it? Like, what if the next pandemic, like, just wipes people out? Um, like, you're really going to wait a year to get it? You know, it's like part of being ready, I guess, for the apocalypse. Biotechnology is really good for the apocalypse, you know? <laughs> Make your own vaccines. I don't, I mean, is monkeypox really a thing? I thought that was like the news media hyping something up, like, didn't it just crash and burn and like nobody's got monkeypox? Um, but yeah, like, are you really going to wait for the government to get some sort of treatment? Like, I'm not. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, especially if people are getting wiped out much faster than COVID did. Oh, oh yeah. It uses one of those, uh, um, yeah, what are those nano, those, yeah, I know what you're saying. So generally DNA vaccines, you want to inject like right under the skin or something like that. Um, and so, uh, 15 people is not a lot of people to have monkeypox, FYI. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's affecting people. Don't get me wrong. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm sure the people are affected by monkeypox, but it definitely doesn't seem like any sort of pandemic level crazy thing. Um, at least I wouldn't bet on it. <coughs> These things move pretty fast. And, like, does monkeypox even kill people? No offense. Um, how do you know if gene therapy worked? Um, you can test and see if the gene was expressed or the protein was made or, or is it gene therapy? Um, something like that. That's pretty easy. Um, can you tell how to make markers? I don't know what that means. Sorry, Carol. I don't know what it means to make markers. Which you use to CRISPR travel only to one type of cell. How do you make CRISPR go to only one cell type? Just blisters in your private. Really? Monkeypox gives you blisters in your genitals? Huh. I didn't know monkeypox gives you blisters on your genitals. That's crazy. That's a crazy one, you know? I didn't know. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I mean, um, either way, um, I think that uh, having the knowledge to be able to test these things biomedically is important, right? Having these skills. Um, because we can't always rely on the government to save us, and they're not always going to save us, right? They're rarely going to save us. You know, they're probably going to try to charge us for it. <laughs> like right now, right? When we're in the beginnings of probably one of the hugest recessions we're going to see in, in, in the, our generation, for sure, but maybe even in, in generations. And uh, it's the price we pay 
for uh, shit like this. Um, and that sucks. You know, that medicine has become such a... Um, such a capitalistic product. Right? It's like capitalism. Fucks, fucks everything. What are your thoughts on investment stock markets worth it? I, you know, I'm not really big on investing. Mm. Majority of people lose money on investments. It's really hard to make money on investments. Um, that's how it works. It's like a casino, right? <laughs> um, if it wasn't like everybody would be making money. So, um, Either have somebody manage your money if you're going to invest or, you know, invest in yourself. Invest in property or a house or things that, you know, have value. But, uh, yeah, never trust the government. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, here's the thing is that, like, people always complain about the medical system in the U.S., and it's not great. I, 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 I agree. It's not perfect, but no medical system is perfect, right? Um, and people are like, well, in other countries, you get free health care. But also in other countries, you don't get access to the type of drugs and medicines and stuff that we have in the U.S., right? Like, all these cutting-edge gene therapies and treatments and all, all this stuff like that, they're not available in any other country, in most other countries. And if they are available in other countries, the, the countries, like, they charge the same amount that they're charged in the U.S. And the crazy thing is, is, like, I'm not against, like, socialized medicine or anything like that. You know, everybody should have access to health care. I think that should be a human right. But, like, here's the thing is that... Um, socialized medicine kind of sucks because like i've seen people who like won't their their prescription for some expensive drug will get denied because somebody thinks it won't help them right it's a waste of money to use this prescription on somebody that it won't benefit right which is totally different than the insurance system or, or like the system in the U.S. where it's just like, yeah, it sucks. Yeah, you need to have insurance, which sucks. Medicine is privatized and stuff like that. But if you have insurance, like, the medical system is pretty damn good. It's pretty amazing, you know? Like, it's, you have access to whatever you need. It, you know, like, to me, I, I, I can't complain. Obviously, you have difficulties like any country but like and yeah it sucks that we don't have um everybody doesn't but i mean there's medicare and medicaid and things like that that try to make medicine available it sucks i think everybody should have access to medicine it should be a human right for sure um but i also think that like uh the u.s we have some crazy innovation and crazy access to drugs that nobody else in the world does nobody else in the world has access to these drugs and medicines and, and treatments and so uh what are you gonna do yeah i mean that's great you have free health care i don't you know It's uh, like, I'm again, I'm not against access to, to medicine. I think it's great. You know, um, I think it's just like, it's not so easy. Like every country, nobody's doing medical care right. No country is. And to pretend like they are is, is a joke. And yes, the medical system in the U.S. is completely different. And yes, it sucks. And everybody should have access to, to medical care for free. Um, should be a human right, but like, I don't think any country in the world is doing it correctly. You know, there are people still who can't get treatments or drugs in 
you know, major European countries that are flying to, you know, Dominican Republic or Mexico or, you know, even the U.S. to get treatments, Canada, and, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I don't think anybody's ever really done a thoughtful analysis of this. Um, and yeah, having insurance and not, not having insurance in the U.S. sucks. It makes life extremely difficult. Um, but, <coughs> sorry, but there are a lot of options like Medicare and Medicaid and ways to get insurance um, for little or no cost. Um, so, you know, yeah, but one day, one day, uh, I don't, honestly, the medical system is just screwed up completely, and I don't know what the correct answer is. You know, it's, like, kind of beyond me. Like, do we have, like, a mix of socialized medicine and privatized medicine? Or is socialized medicine worse or better? Um, it's, like, I don't, I don't know. I've never seen a thoughtful analysis of it. Why did I decide to move to Texas? Because, um, uh, I mean, one was the cost of living. I, I, I lived in Oakland in the Bay Area, and during the pandemic, um, you know, the cost of an apartment was like $3,500 for a two-bedroom. That was like 1,200 square feet or something. It was ridiculous. And California had some of the strictest lockdowns, so there was nothing you could do couldn't go outside you know you went outside and you like um all restaurants were closed or like you know you, you couldn't go to eat at restaurants you had to like stand outside the door or some shit um and so it became very difficult to live there and it was just like why do i still live here um i really appreciate the bay area for all the opportunities that it offered me like living there it was crazy because i had I was so close to so many people um, for like the seven or eight years I lived there. But there came a point in time where it's just like, I'm not getting any more benefit by living here. Um, I already pretty much met all the people I'm going to meet. And if I haven't, you know, I will meet them sometime or contact them and be able to converse over email or chat or phone or Zoom or whatever. Um, and so it's time to leave. And Austin, Texas is awesome. Um, like, I love Austin because it's just like everybody's super friendly. Um, everybody thinks Texas is like so bad. Like everybody's bigots and racists and all this stuff, which is funny because like I have not had that experience at all. People are generally really nice. Um, and obviously I don't spend a lot of time in like rural Texas, but I have, you know, been places and traveled and, uh, yeah, like I can't go play. Like I love Texas. Um, I love Austin and, uh, it's a great city to live in. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the good thing about Austin is it's like small enough, you know, Probably the greater Austin area has like a million people, but uh, it has a very small town feel. Things are very spread out, you know? Um, and so it's really nice. Yeah, I mean, I enjoy it. Um, but yeah, I, I really, I probably plan to stay here for the next 10 years or so, or, you know, barring the apocalypse or something like that. <laughs> But yeah, um, you know, if anybody's ever in Austin, contact us, swing on by, um, we have a pretty cool space, and uh, yeah, we're really trying to build up biotech in Austin, have events, you know, we're having our Biohack the Planet conference, um, like Labor Day weekend, um, Uh, yeah, so, 
you know, are there any biohacking solutions for trans people, specifically male to female? No, I mean, I mean, the thing is, is like, if you can't get um, hormone replacement therapy, you know, um, gender hormone replacement therapy, um, like, that's that's tough. It's the easiest way. Like you're you're probably not going to figure out a biohacking way that's easier than that. And there are plenty of websites online that you can get drugs, especially you know hormone drugs, um, like estrogen and shit like that. Um, All Day Chemist is one of them, and you can order it online. And they ship to anywhere in the world, and everything they sell is legit. Um, so even if you uh, don't necessarily have a prescription or doctor's access to prescription or drugs for hormone replacement therapy. Um, you know, there are plenty of places you can find. Obviously, it costs money, um, but usually the cost isn't that expensive. You know, it's usually fairly reasonable. Um, but yeah, biohacking for stuff like that, it can be really interesting. I've had some people send me interesting emails like, I want to change my, you know, like sex chromosomes or something like that. That's really interesting. Um, I imagine it would be mostly a cosmetic change to cells um, in the body. Like I think if you have a Y chromosome in, in your past, uh, you know, puberty and development, removing it, giving yourself an extra X chromosome or something like that. Um, probably wouldn't do anything physically, really. I don't know this for sure. This is just a you know, hypothetical guess. Um, but it's an interesting cosmetic change, you know? Because we don't often think of cosmetic changes on the genetic level. Um, and it really fuck with people also. <laughs> you know? Um, because the whole idea of having... You know, two X chromosomes make you female, and X Y chromosome makes you male. Um, it would really fuck with that, and I'm all for fucking the system and you know stuff like that. So, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, I'm not here to get into a gender debate about what a man or a woman is or anything like that. You know. Um, everybody has their own opinion and definition and, and things, and it's just, I think it's a complicated thing that is not, is, is not the correct thing to ask, I think, you know, how do you define a man or a woman, like, why are we trying to define these things, I don't know, you know. But it's so, um, I don't think it would be easy to get rid of a whole chromosome. I think it would be actually pretty hard. But it's interesting, you know, from the standpoint of just like art and science and, and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But any more art projects in the works? Yeah, I got a couple. Um, there's a couple I've been trying to finish, and a couple stuff, um, yeah, a couple cool things, maybe, I'm just so busy, but hopefully by the end of the month, um, I did, I, I've been doing a lot of, or thinking about a lot of art projects around identity, um, you know, like gender identity, sexual life, whatever, all these different identities, yeah, um, and stuff like that, so it's just like, yeah, you know, that, that's kind of where my focus is right now, but I also have some cool projects that I've been working on for a while that I just need to finish um, that aren't centered around that. Can cancer cells be weaponized by scientists? I don't know. What does that even mean? I don't know. Sorry. Um, um, you could identify as an attack helicopter. Yes. I don't know. Somebody trying to 
tell me what sex is. Um, advice to people who want to pick the space of biohacking up in media and public. Um, I don't necessarily understand the question. Um, are you talking about promote biohacking in, in media and public? I think the best way to promote biohacking is just to do it, you know? Is just to like experiment and uh, do stuff and post about it online. Science is generally pretty cool and people are generally kind of impressed when you do science, especially genetic engineering, right? So if you're just like, hey, look, I'm doing genetic engineering. Generally, people are going to be like, ooh, that's cool. How do I do genetic engineering also, you know? Um, I think that's the, uh, the best way to promote biohacking or, you know, genetic engineering or science. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's great for everybody. That's what I try to do is just do experiments. Obviously, you know, I don't always have time to, like, no, we all, you know, we're all busy people. I imagine have jobs and things like that. Don't always have time to do experiments, but I think it's um, the best way. Yeah. Just, like, be, you, you know, you're, you're your own best propagandist. <laughs> your own best PR person. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Are you late? I don't know. I started to stream earlier and it didn't really work out. And also we generally do streams on Wednesday. Me, David, and Daria. Doing streams on Wednesday. And uh, so this is just kind of a stream I decided to do by myself. Decided to do some streams by myself and hang out and chat and uh, complain about stuff. Um, I tried to do some experiments, um, but for some reason the live streaming on my cell phone didn't work. Um, so I'm going to try to get that fixed for next week so then I can like do experiments and live stream at the same time because I think that'll be pretty cool. Um, yeah, but this week I failed, so it's just me chatting at the Odin. What's that? <laughs> here's the thing, yeah, like, here's the thing about, like, sex. And I've been trying to write something on this, and it's interesting. Um, people are like, ooh, you're a male or female if you have, like, X, two X chromosomes, or you're a male if you have X, Y chromosome. Um, but, like, if you take a cell, just like a cell from your body, and grow it in a Petri dish, and it has XX or XY chromosome, there's virtually no difference between these cells, right? Like... You cannot sex these cells and say this cell is male and this cell is female, right? Because it's like, um, it makes no sense, right? Like there's got to be some difference, right? Because like you can have any random genes in, in your cells, right? If they don't do anything, why does it matter? If they're not expressing genes that specifically change the phenotype of the cell, who cares, right? So then you're like, okay, cells themselves don't have sex, right? Because they're just the same. You can't tell the difference between, if I showed you male and female cells in a Petri dish, you couldn't tell the difference. Even if you like sequenced, you know, the transcriptome, you'd probably have a hard time telling the difference between male and female cells. Maybe even impossible, right? So if cells don't have like physical differences if cells can't have sex what is the point what what point does it reach when something has sex right like does it have to be secondary sexual characteristics right because you know that's what these extra chromosomes do right like 
These chromosomes will tell our body during development to develop secondary sexual characteristics. Right? But if it's secondary sexual characteristics, like, what, why is that so important? Like, I don't get it. Like, who cares? Like, there are plenty of men who are overweight and have tits. Like, does that make them a woman? No, most people probably say probably not, right? But, like, where do you draw this line? And I think it's because, like, people want so bad to be able to, like, define things, right? They want this thing to be, like, male and female. But, like, there's no, like, humans love to define things, but there's no easy way to define this because, like, who's the one who made this definition in the first place? Like, somebody at some point in time had to be, like, all right, we're going to say all people who look like this are male and all people who look like this are female or something like that. But, like, just as somebody said that at some point in time, some probably old white guy that, like, who gives a shit? Somebody can say something else. Somebody can be like, that does not encompass all of humanity. Like, having two categories for, like, the sex or gender of human beings does not encompass all of humanity, and it doesn't, you know? Like, not even chromosomes, not even sex, right? And so it's like, yeah, and what about at some point in time when you can, like, change your chromosomes? Like, then what? Right? Like, I think it's both sides have these, like, ideological issues right like people no offense i might offend people people who are trans um they want to be a woman some not a all of them um but like they also most of them have not grown up as a woman they have not had all the woman life experiences right so no matter how hard they try, they will never have had the experiences of this category that we define as a woman completely, right? And the other people are like, well, you can't be a woman, right? Because your chromosomes and your genitalia are wrong. And it's like, if that's the reason that you think that somebody can't be some sex or gender, like, that's dumb. And both sides are fighting, like, I'm a woman, you're not a woman, I'm a woman, you're not a woman. And, and instead we should just be like, what the fuck, this is dumb. The gender binary is dumb, the sex binary is dumb, it all makes no sense. Like, why are we trying to define all of humans by these two simple categories? Like, why does it matter if trans females have menstrual periods? I'm confused. See, here's the thing is, like, people are trying to find things to, like, define something. Like, look, I'm different in this way. And it's not to say you're not different. But I don't think that's the point. I don't think the point is, like, are you different than a trans woman? I think, like, the point is having this dumb binary is stupid right? Like, why is there this binary? Why does that make any sense? Like, you can't categorize all of humans into these two things, can you? You can't, right? There are plenty of people who have periods who don't just have two X chromosomes, right? Not plenty, but some, right? So, like, yeah, there's some women who never have periods in their life. Does that make them not a woman? I think it's just dumb. Like, there's always caveats. And just trying to define people in these categories is dumb. Those are medical conditions. <laughs> what does it mean to have a medical condition? That you're not like the average person? Like...
yeah, I mean, it's just, this is biology. <laughs> I like, I like how somebody who probably doesn't even have a degree in biology is arguing with somebody who has a PhD in it, and they're telling me this is biology. It's like, come on, really? Really, Stephanie? Like, this is biology? Mm -hmm. I think you're outmatched here. I think you're trying to find something to, here's the thing is like, I think what it is, is like, these people are uncomfortable. Oh, you're an RN, sorry. <laughs> Must mean you know way more about biology than me. I think the thing is, is that like trans people make people uncomfortable because they don't know how to define them, right? They don't necessarily easily fit in this binary. And so, like, people get uncomfortable and they're like, you're not a woman or something like that. And that's like, why do you give a shit? Like, who gives a shit? Why do you care? This person isn't bothering you. Right? Like, how is this person bothering you? You kind of deal with trans people daily and what do you do? Tell them you're not a woman? I would seriously, you're the kind of people who scares me, Stephanie. Because every time I go to like a medical office and I have somebody who's like you're not this or you're not that like that's the way you treat your patients like that's not like who cares why does anybody care why do you care tell me Stephanie why do you care like let, let's hear it right now you tell everybody on this video why you care so much about whether a trans person calls himself a woman or not. Yeah, why do you care how people live their lives? Like, like that's the weird thing. It's like, who cares? It's not affecting anybody. Nobody's forcing anything on you. If you don't like it, look away. If you're an RN, that's kind of even worse. Because I have kids and I don't care what adults do. What does this, what does having kids have to do with it? Like, huh? And now you're going to probably say something about like, people are trying to make children transition and all this stuff. It's like such terrible political, like, talking points that have been brought by fucking media to brainwash you. Like, trans people have no effect on you whatsoever. And yet here you are trying to tell them who they are and who they aren't. Like, that's the thing. Is that, like, that makes no sense. Like, we have some person a long time ago, makes no sense, created this sex binary and gender binary. And now people are trying to be all militant about it. Like, it's the thing when it's not even true. Like, there is not. They're teaching it in schools. Oh, okay, I see. They're teaching that people can be whatever they want to be. <laughs> like, I feel bad for your kids, Stephanie, that if one day they happen to come out as trans or something like that, that you won't be there to support them. That's kind of crazy, you know? Because like, as, as a parent myself, I could not do anything but show my kid love and support, no matter what they chose to be. What does it even mean? If you were, that's not how transgender people work. They don't just like choose their gender. You get that, right? Like, this is just a crazy conversation, and I'm kind of over it because it's, like, so filled with ignorance, like, complete ignorance. That it's just, like, what is even going on here? Trans people don't choose their gender. You get that, right? I don't think you do. And so it's just, like, Stephanie, you know, I didn't get to choose to be male. It's just like, anyway, no longer responding to Stephanie. I won't block you because I think that's dumb and mean, but it's just like, 
Yeah. I mean, and this is the whole thing is it's just like people care because it's delusional. You don't have to because it's delusional. You don't have to hate trans people, but encouraging a delusion. Now people are saying trans people are delusional. Really? Wow. <laughs> there are a lot of interesting, ignorant people in this chat right now that I didn't imagine people who listen to my stuff would be like. Um, wow. <laughs> Trans people are delusional. Huh. <laughs> I think most of the world is pretty much delusional. Um, yeah, it's like, oh gosh, it's like we change our bodies and everything constantly. We change the way we look constantly, right? People get plastic surgeries. People, people get hair transplants. Change their hair color. Change their clothes change all this stuff but it's like once it's somebody trying to change their appearance to look like a different gender then it starts to get weird right like a woman can go and get breast implants or you know breast augmentation whatever they want but if it's somebody who was a male traditionally they decide to do it then it's weird like why does it all of a sudden become weird it's the same exact thing and you start to realize that it's not the thing, it's that the way society views it, right? Because this society doesn't want to be confused. Society doesn't want to be like, ooh, you know, I don't know how to define this person. They don't fit in the gender binary. Society doesn't want that. And so they're fighting against it constantly, which is really weird. Because it's just like, wait, it's not delusional when a woman wants to get breast implants. A quote, unquote, woman, you know traditional woman but all of a sudden when it's somebody who's not a traditional woman who wants to get breast implants or something now it's delusional and weird like how does that make sense like can't that person also do whatever they want to their body why does it have to be society who gets to dictate that shouldn't we really have the say in what we want to do with our body that's the thing it's like the pharmaceutical companies the government, the medical system, don't give us any say to what we do with our bodies. You know, whether it's like whatever you want, abortion, what drugs you can use, right? What foods you can eat, all this stuff. The government doesn't let us do what we want with our bodies. And somehow fighting against, you know, people who were assigned male at birth or whatever, getting breast implants, like that seems dumb or taking hormones that has no effect on you at all, like, that seems dumb. That seems like the government just imposing more restrictions on who we are and what we can do. Why would anybody want that? Who gives a shit what this person wants? Like, who gives a shit? It doesn't affect me. So why don't we just let people do whatever they want? Like, why aren't we supporting anybody in the right to do and be whoever they want, to do whatever they want to their body. I support that right completely for people to do whatever they wish with their body. And it's like crazy that people don't support that right. They're like, only when I agree with it should people be able to do what they want with their body. Like it doesn't work that way. That's one of the things about abortion that's crazy, right? Like if we would all just be fighting for the right over our own bodies, like abortion wouldn't the right to abortion wouldn't be a thing. The right to access to life-saving treatments wouldn't be a thing. Because we'd be able to do whatever we wanted to our bodies. You know? And, uh, yeah, everyone does want to control everyone else. It doesn't make any sense. It's just like, let everybody fucking be. Right? I like that. Biological self-actualization, right? It's like... That's what we need. Yeah, people just want to control others, and I don't get it. Right? I don't get it. Why people want to control others so much.
it's just like, why don't you just let people be? Like, they're not hurting you. That's the crazy thing. It's like, they're not hurting you. They're not hurting. I think, yeah, people are scared because they're like, I don't understand that. I don't understand that thing. Right? And so it's just like, yeah, that's tough. I get it. When things are unknown and you don't understand them, it can be really tough. Right? Like, it's hard to comprehend and deal with those things. But, like, if we're just more accepting, even if things aren't understandable, if we're just like, I don't understand that, but, like, that person isn't hurting anybody, so I'm just going to let them do what they want to do because they're not hurting anybody. And that's okay. Right? And so it's just like, damn, you know? Like, let people be in every way. And I think this is so important in our medical system, in our lives, is that it's not just letting people be in regards to gender, sex, whatever. That's just a small part of things. It's like letting people be in regards to, like, the medications they can take, right, and have access to. You know, when people can't get access to, they have terminal illnesses, and they want to try, you know, life-saving treatments. The government won't allow them. They should be able to because they should be allowed to do whatever they want to their body, right? If they want to, they should. And so many things. The food you eat, you know? Like, we can't get access to, like, raw milk. When I was in Ukraine, you know, it's like I went to, uh, you know, Daria. Um, I went to her dad's uh, milk farm, cows. I don't even know what you call it. (laughs) And uh, we just drink milk straight, you know? And it's like, you can't, like, sell raw milk in the U.S. to people. Uh, there's some states you can. It, it, it's complicated, not in stores and all that stuff. But it's like we don't have control over the foods that we eat, right? The government tells us what we can and can't eat. Um, and that's crazy. It's like, wait, I can't even eat the foods I want to eat? Like, if I make a choice to eat this thing, shouldn't I be allowed to? Shouldn't I be able to buy it? Um, and it's like, I don't get why we're all up in each other's faces about all this stuff when it's just like if somebody wants to make that choice and it doesn't affect you and don't give me this bullshit about how it like affects my kids or like affects my community or something like that like come on printing people are going to go in bathrooms it's like there's more hetero people who go in bathrooms and like do creepy shit than trans people like what the hell you know, it's like, just let people be. You know, nobody, it's like, I, I don't get it. Hey, Chas, I don't know if you know, but like, I'm trans, right? So you're saying it's delusion that I'm delusional. And like, I'm not going to say I'm not, not delusional, but like, that's pretty uh, ballsy. I mean, if I cared enough about who you were as a person, which I don't, I have no idea who you are, I'd block you or kick you out of this chat or something like that. But, like, who are you? <laughs> Why do we care about your opinion? <laughs> you know? Yep, I have been on hormone replacement therapy for over two years. It's hard to tell, you know. We can definitely see that uh, my body is changing and everybody's like, you look so much younger. And it's like... (laughs) Um, I'm not trying to be anybody and I'm not arguing that I'm a woman or anything like that. You know, it's just that like... I get, I, here's the thing is that like you say it's delusional or, and people say it's a choice, but it's not a choice. Like imagine, um, 
it's like something inside you that you can't change, right? You have this like feeling voice idea inside you that you can't change and it's in your head and it's constantly there. And it's like the way you see yourself is not the way the world sees you, right? And you have to deal with this for your whole life. And you think about it every day, right? Like, I don't look the correct way. My body's fucked up. And we all have these issues, you know, body dysmorphia and everything like that. If you don't, like, wow, more power to you. Um, And uh, it's like, but this is not something I chose. I didn't sit there one day and be like, ooh, I want to be a... a woman or something like that no this thing that's in my head i don't know if it's genetic i don't know if it's hormonal i don't know if it's caused by the environment or something like that this thing that's in my head just constantly constantly put pressure on me and uh i couldn't get rid of it the way i saw myself in my head was different than the way i appeared outwardly and it was really hard because it's like what do you do about that right like if you're if i was say a woman and like i didn't feel comfortable in my body um like i could go and get breast implants or if i was a man and i my hairline was receding and i didn't like the way i looked like that like i was extremely uncomfortable in my body i could get you know hair transplants or I could get liposuction or all these things. But like society doesn't view transgender people the same way. Like if you can't stand the way you look, if you hate the way you look and you are miserable as who you are, in your head you see yourself as somebody completely else. And like I can't say you can understand it. Like I can't say that anybody would understand it unless they experienced it. Like, this is not something that's easy to understand. You can't just be like, let me try to explain to you what it's like to have this pressure on you yourself your whole life. Like, no, you can't understand it easily. It's difficult. It's even difficult for me to understand. I'm the one going through it. I don't know why it's happening to me or what's causing it. And you don't think I tried everything to, like, not have it happen? Like maybe what I can do is I can like convince myself it's not real and maybe I can like you know and I tried I tried everything you know if this was like a mental illness or condition like I tried everything but none of it worked and the only thing that seems to help help me as a human be happy with who I am is to transition And, like, that's crazy, right? And, like, I can't explain it. I can't sit here and tell you, like, you know, how it works or anything like that. You know? And so it's like, but it's real. Like, and it's not a choice. I didn't sit here and like decide for myself to be this way. In fact, I actively tried for it not to be that way because it's hard to fucking be a trans person. Look at the comments I get here. I get told I'm delusional by people. You think it's nice to be a trans person? You think like if I had any other choice, I would choose something else? I would. I don't want to do this. I don't want to live through this. It's a shitty, you know? It's shitty when the world has defined a gender binary, but gender binaries don't make any sense. And existing out of that gender binary means people are uncomfortable and awkward with you. Like, that sucks. Nobody would choose that life. Like, you don't choose that. You do it because the opposite is so much pain and hurt that to not do it would be difficult. Right? And that's the thing, right? Like, nobody chooses this. 
nobody chooses to be a trans person. Like, it's something that is part of you. I have sexual... <laughs> My sexuality, um, I've dated both men and women in my life before, you know, all throughout my life. Um, but sexuality is also something I think is really dumb. It's like, like, I don't get it. Like, why people think there's even a reason to have, like, a sexuality or a gender. Like, these things are stupid. It's because humans like to define things, you know? And it's just like, who cares? Like, who cares? It doesn't affect you. Why do you care? Like, I... It's because people want to feel more morally superior. People want to force other people to do what they want to do. And then people suffer because of it. Instead of just letting people do what they want. That has no effect on anybody else. It's like, damn... Yeah, I like that. It, it's the only choice that is chosen is to live as one's true self, and we all go through that. That's the thing. And it's just like it's hard, right? And we all go through it. It's not just trans people; it's everybody. And it's just like with trans people, it's seen as so weird. Transgender people have not just popped up in recent years. Like, that's a weird thing to think. Transgender people have been around since, like, the beginning of fucking time. <laughs> you know? Uh, it's just it's super weird. I mean, you can find pictures from the 50s and 60s, and I'm sure the history of transgender people, there's many scientific papers or academic papers written on it that you can find, you know, way back but it's not just a thing it's not just a fad here's the thing is that like now people are more accepting of it you know when i was younger in the 90s there weren't really transgender people because like it was not acceptable you would get you know like you wouldn't be able to go out in public and be trans and now people are way more accepting of this thing so people feel more comfortable coming out and being their, themselves because they're not as afraid of all the terrible things that will happen to them. It doesn't make it like it's super easy. These things aren't super easy. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is that like everybody changes everything about themselves, right? We try to change the way we look. If we're, like, ugly, we try to look pretty. If we're overweight, we try to be skinny. Right? It's like we all try to change everything, but immediately when it's, like, gender or something, now all of a sudden it's bad. It's funny. <laughs> it's like, who cares? Like, what? What's the difference? Does it offend you in some way? Does it make you feel awkward? Well, like, leave me alone because, like, I don't want to be around you either. You know, it's just, yeah, I wish, I wish people would, uh, like, just not care. Like, why does anybody care? Maybe one day. Um, people will find something else to not care about um, or to care about you know something else to judge people I just like yeah these aren't things that you can necessarily change or easily change um, and so it's just like Yeah, I mean, it is social norms. That's the thing. In, like, 100 years, there's not going to be a gender binary. Like, why would there be a gender binary? It doesn't make any sense. Right? Like, how does a gender binary make sense? Like, why do people have to be, like, 
outwardly appear as men or women. Like, why? Like, who cares? Can't they outwardly appear as whatever they want? Like, a man and a woman at the same time? Or, like, androgynous? Or, like, you know, who cares? Like, that's the thing. And it's just, like, that, I think, is super cool. That, like, people have the ability to express themselves in whatever way they want, regardless of what clothes they wear or anything like that. Why am I pushing this agenda? Because I'm fucking trans and, like, I care. I'm not trying to push an agenda. And if you think, like, me asking people to accept other people is like pushing an agenda well I'm, I'm sorry you know <laughs> oh god it's just like if if yeah being kind to people is like terrible for you and i think that's what it comes down to is that like it's all about just people being kind to each other right and it's like why can't we just be kind like why do we have to be assholes to each other judge each other you know why don't we just let each other be whoever we want to be do you know whatever we want to do as long as it doesn't hurt anybody else like why And it's like, if being kind is, like, seen as a negative to you, maybe you need to check your priorities. Because it's just like, damn. Yeah. But it's like, it's important to me. Because... I have to deal with it in my life. I'm sorry. You don't like. Hey, Alan. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's just, uh, like, we need autonomy. Like, we need autonomy with what we can do. And I think if you could just come down to that principle that like biohackers, scientists, medical systems, um, if we have bodily autonomy, it doesn't matter what it's for. If we just have bodily autonomy, then like we, we should just be okay with all these things, right? You can be okay with doing whatever you want and I can be okay with whatever I want, as long as we don't bother or hurt each other. Yeah, this is the first time I've talked in a video about, at least openly, pretty openly about being trans or whatever. I wrote about it recently, um, but I don't really talk about it too much because it's not something that's like important to me. I just want to be accepted for who I am, um, and I don't want to be like trans or anything. I just want to be me. I don't want that to be like an identifying part of who I am. Right? I just, I've always just wanted to be me. And so it's just like, I don't talk about it much. And I probably really won't after this. It's just like all these people talking about it got me a little, um, I don't know. Yeah, that's the thing is, yeah, like, for some people, they're just like, oh, I didn't know. And it's like, yeah, I, that's okay. I understand. And, like, I'm not here to be like, use my correct pronouns or anything like that. Like, I know, like, who I have been and who I was. And I don't, you know, I'm not going to, like, judge you because you used the wrong pronoun or something like that for me or the wrong name or something like that. Like, I get it. I do it sometimes myself (laughs) but it's like I just want to exist and be happy well 
Well, thank you, Chaz. I, it can be a bit shocking. I, I, I imagine, right? It's just like, whoa. And it's hard because, like, I get it so abrupt for everybody else. But for me, it, it wasn't abrupt, right? It's something that's been in me my whole life, pretty much. So it's just like... It's hard because there's no easy way to talk about it. But, yeah, biohacking, biohacking your gender, right? I mean, what's more biohacking than taking pills that cause your body to change, cause you to like grow breasts and your body to look different like that's pretty biohacking you know if there ever is one so uh, if you want to look like younger like me all you have to do is you know take female hormones <laughs> I kid kind of I don't know maybe um, um, but anyway <clears throat> I got to take off soon. I actually have an appointment at the DMV to get my Texas driver's license. Finally, hopefully it works this time. And, uh, you know, be kind to people like everybody's just doing their best. Right. And I think if we just be more kind, to everybody like it'd make the world a way better place. Yeah, there are. There are, there are, like, fish and stuff that can change their sex and gender and whatever, change the way they look, and, like, animals. It's, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's because I think the problem with humans is we just, like, don't like things that are different. We like things that are easy to categorize. And once things become difficult to categorize, we all have issues with it. Everybody, even me. You know, you're just like, I want things to be the same. I want things to be easy to define, and I wish it was a. I wish it was like that, um, but it's not, and so life is hard. <laughs> but anyway, that's my uh, sex and gender rant, and uh, I appreciate you listening, and appreciate you even more if uh, you're understanding. <laughs> I won't. Don't worry. I won't forget my DMV appointment. Thanks for reminding me, Michael. Um, but yeah, thank you for coming, and I'm sorry. I don't like to rant about this stuff or, like, be political or, uh, you know? I just like freedoms for people. And, um, yeah. Um, be kind to each other. Thank you, Carol. Everybody have a good day, and I will talk to you soon. Um, thank you for listening, even if we didn't agree or don't agree. Um, yeah, have a good one.